second half. Um, they were the better football team tonight, and um, you know we certainly uh, are not the football team that I thought we were. Um, and uh, you know, got to do a much better job, obviously, and developing our football team. Um, we uh, clearly were short in a lot of areas tonight, and that falls on me to get our football team to be better in most of the competitive areas that you saw tonight. Um, execution in the first half, uh, the inability to convert in the red zone, um, you know, second half, uh, didn't play with a sense of urgency. Um, you know, all of those fall on, on coaching and, and getting our players to, to recognize that and make those kinds of choices in practice. And, and then defensively, obviously, uh, our inability to slow down the running game in the second half. Um, you know, the counter play was problematic for us. We knew they were going to run it. Um, they added a two-back uh, counter play, and we just we couldn't fit the play. Um, and that's unacceptable from a coaching standpoint. You've got to be able to make those adjustments, and, and uh, we, we failed to, um, to get that done. So, uh, again, I take full responsibility for not having our team playing the kind of football I thought they would. And um, our players have got to make a decision that, you know, they, they have to get back to um, the practice field and, and double down on their efforts and their attention to detail and their focus and, and the things that they need to do as well. But this is a, this is a total failure on a coaching standpoint and, and, and a player standpoint that um, you know, we have to obviously uh, address and we have to own. And um, we'll see. Um, I know adversity is always going to strike at some time in this game. Uh, and this is, this is our first uh, real uh, piece of adversity, if you will, that, that we have to address. And um, I'm confident our guys will uh, and our coaches will rally in the manner that they need to. So with that, we'll uh, open it up to questions. Uh, Jacques Doucet, WAP TV in Baton Rouge. Coach, the second half, do you think it was physicality? Or are you surprised that they kind of pushed you around the 31 nothing run second half? Yeah, I'm quite aware of, of the the score and um, you know I didn't like the way we came out um, I sensed it I felt it and uh, I've got to take accountability and responsibility for the way that we came out in the second half it's um, it's it's disappointing um, but you know the buck stops with me and and I've got to get our football team to understand and recognize that um, you know, you've, you've got to play this game for four quarters with, with a mentality. Um, and we just did not, for some reason, we thought we were somebody else. We thought we were the two-time national champion Georgia Bulldogs or something. I don't know what we thought, but um, we were mistaken. The defensive matchups that your DBs had to face all night. Clearly, they're gifted receivers. Anything that you guys can do, anything that you saw that they could have done during this game? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously Coleman's a tough matchup. Uh, Wilson's a tough matchup. Um, you know, I thought we competed there. Um, you know, no, I, I, don't, I don't know that there was much more else that, that they could have done. Brian, the fourth down calls, can you take us through maybe the, the reasoning for those decisions there and what you would have liked to have seen done differently on those plays? Well, I think there were pretty easy calls, fourth and goal from the one. You know, that was a pretty easy one. Um, we're trying to run the football with an option for, for Jaden to pull it. and. 
you know, we'll, we'll have to just go back and look at the film and, and see what the looks are for him and, and um, you know, do a better job of addressing that in practice and, and giving him those kinds of, you know, pressure looks that force you to make those quick decisions. Um, but no, those are, those are pretty standard fourth down calls and decisions. I think both of those were, you know, uh, read option uh, kinds of decisions uh, that, that Jaden was confronted with. Um, coach in the back, um, Jada Ferris, Tiger TV. Um, what does this loss mean for the rest of the season for you guys, especially as you get into conference play? Uh, it, it, it means everything as to what our mindset is. Like, how do we handle this? Um, is this who we want to be? Or do we look at this and say, this isn't the kind of football team we want to be? So, you know, when, when you have these kinds of losses, they're, they're, they're disappointing. And in some instances, they're devastating losses. But it's how you respond to them. And um, they have a chance to respond um, to this very disappointing performance in the second half. And so the choices they'll have to make will be ones that start tomorrow. Um, how they handle themselves 24-7 is, is really what I'll be interested in seeing. Uh, hey, Coach, Glenn West, go 247. Just um, curious on, you know, uh, Logan Diggs wasn't out there tonight. Just curious maybe what happened with him. And then also the running game as a whole, just how do you guys think you can get that going um, after kind of a really tough, I guess, tough night for your backs overall? Well, I mean, everybody's searching for, for balance in the running game. So uh, we didn't have the kind of balance that we needed. Uh, Logan Diggs was a coach's decision. Um, I don't know quite whether he's 100% and, uh, you know, able to, to practice at the level that we need him to quite yet. Um, yeah, I mean, look, everybody's looking for that, that balance in the running game. Um, you saw what we tried to do. We tried to run the football in those very important downs, and we weren't as effective. Um, and we're going to go back, and we're going to work on it, and we're going to continue to be um, diligent in those areas because we've got to be better at it. So uh, we've got a minimum of 11 more games, and I'm going to tell you now that we're going to be better. Um, and, and we're going to commit ourselves to that. Coach, over here, uh, Koki Riley, the advertiser, I, I was sort of curious with Harold Perkins' performance tonight. What do you think was sort of missing from him putting a real impact onto the game? What, what was missing? Well, I mean, you know, he's playing a position for the first time. So there's a, there's a learning curve there. Um, he's... He's learning. He's learning how to play linebacker for the first time. You know, we put him in a position last year where he was see ball, get ball. Um, now he's in a position where, you know, he's got to get over the top. He's got a back coming out of the backfield. You know, he's he, he's got to be disciplined and, 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 you know, can't lose his eyes on, on, on the quarterback mesh, you know, fourth down. There's a lot going on there, and he's trying to sort it out. Um, you're catching a young player early on in his career, and he's, he's going through some growing pains. Coach, back here in the back right, Megan Glover, KTC in Lafayette, Louisiana. Coach, uh, with Keon transitioning to Florida State, and um, that transition may be some limited film on him in that regard, what made him so difficult to defend tonight? There wasn't any limited film on him. Um, we, we knew who he was, and... Um, we knew it was a very difficult um, matchup for us. Um, uh, excellent ball skills, uh, a matchup, you know, problem for us, and he presented um, he presented that kind of problem tonight. Good, awesome, thank you. Jaden, right here, Bryce Coon from Twenty Four Seven Sports. Coach talked a lot about choices uh, needing to be made as the leader, as the quarterback. 
where does that kind of fall on you for the rest of this team? And, and did you see that kind of happen during this game in the second half kind of get away? I mean, everything falls on me. Um, what Coach was talking about, the urgency and the, the choice that we make. Um, I mean, he's right. You know, everything, that, that falls back on me. You know, being the, the leader and the quarterback of the team, I got to get the guys going. Um, I got to set the urgency. I got to set the tempo. Um, you know, first half, we, we had that. You know, we got to finish the drives um, that we had in the red zone. You know, that, that set us back a little bit. But coming out of halftime, you know, it starts with me and getting the guys going. And that first drive, I felt like we had some urgency. But <clears throat> in critical moments, um, you know, I got to get the guys going. I got to set the tempo. I got to be able to push those guys because they're, everybody's looking at me and how I maneuver uh, day in and day on a daily basis. You know, I got to go back there and draw on board as a leader and see what can I do better to get this team also more prepared um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Back here, Jane Daniels, uh, Ricardo LeCompte with WWF TV in New Orleans. Uh, those two fourth downs in the first, the first half, how critical were those not being able to convert those? And, and do you feel like those are things you can learn from in terms of how you can operate better in those types of situations? I mean, 100%. Um, those two fourth downs are very critical. Uh, especially playing a top ten opponent, a, a top five opponent that we that we played tonight, a very good team that we've been playing together for a while. They capitalized on those type of things, um, so not being able to to come away with points and capitalize on those those opportunities, it it hurt. It set us back, like I said, a lot. Um, the second fourth down, that was on me. Um, you know, I was tr probably I was doing too much. Um, you know, just hand the ball off. Hopefully, we could we could get into a crease and get a first down. Um, and then the first one, you know, I just got to lay the ball up. You know, it's fourth down. Give somebody a shot. So uh, going back on film now, that's something I'll, I'll take to heart and, and look at it very critically.